Question 17. Right, I think we're ready now. Force F between two bodies is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, between the bodies. And when D equals F, D equals 5, F equals 8. Find an expression for F in terms of D. Right, now first off, let's look at this inversely proportional to. That is when we write 1 over. That's inversely proportional to. But it does say the square of the distance, so therefore we need distance squared. So that's the force. It's inversely proportional to the square of the distance. And that's the same as writing it with an equal sign as k over d squared. So that's the expression we're looking for, but we still need to find the value of k. That's called the constant of proportionality. k is the constant of proportionality. We we'll use the pair of values, d equals 5, when f equals 8. So in here let's put f equals 8, and let's put d equals 5, which of course is 5 squared is 25. If that's the case, then f itself must be 8 multiplied by 5 squared. 8 multiplied by 25, which is 200. I said F, didn't I? I've been very careless. It's because I've just started and I'm not uh, being as careful as I should be. I hope I haven't uh, made that for the whole paper. Here we go. So K is 200. The constant proportionality is 200. So we have that force. Force equals constant proportionality divided by D squared. And we now know the constant proportionality is 200 over d squared, that's what's required for part A. Part A, find an expression or an equation or a formula if you like, a formula for F and D. Okay, now using that formula we can do part B. Part B says calculate F when D equals 4. So using that formula that we've just found where the constant is 200. Replace the letter F with F equals 200 over 4 squared. 4 squared being 16. Not a calculated paper, isn't it? So this will better cancel this. 4 goes into 250 times and 4 goes into 16 4 times. Well, that cancel by 2 as well, won't it? And that's 12 and a half. 12.5 if you want to do it as a decimal. So that's worked out the value of F when D equals 4. Now we've got to use the formula that we've just found. And now F is 2. What's D? So let's put F is 2. Now the best way of sorting this out is to appreciate you can actually swap the position of the 2 and the d squared. If you've got a fraction, you can actually just pull that d squared up there and put that 2 in place of it down there. They can just swap places. 200 over 2 cancels to 100. If d squared equals 100, then d itself is the square root of 100, which is 10. And the only thing I've forgotten is units. There aren't any units in the question, which is unusual. But one would expect the force to be measured in newtons, and the distance in metres, or centimetres, or kilometres, or whatever. So it's unusual not to have any units in the question. Right, let's see what sort of marks we've got for that. Now there's one mark for appreciating that force inversely proportional to d squared can be written as force equals k over d squared. So the mark for that, there's a mark for working out the constant proportionality is 200. And then there's a mark which some people actually don't get. 
because they don't write down what they're asked to write down, that connection. So as a mark for actually writing down the expression that you're asked for. That's part A. Part B is one mark for working out 12 and a half. And for part C there's actually two marks because of the extra bit of manipulation around the area here. So there's one mark there and there's one mark there. Question 17. Question 18. Work out and give your answer in its simplest form. Right. Now this square root of 5, that's actually called a third. Square root of 5 is a third. The square root of a non-perfect square is a third. The square root of 59 is a third. Okay. Right, so how should we start this? Well, I think we've got to recognise that the top part of the expression is inviting us to multiply it like we would in algebra. In other words, it's inviting us to multiply both of these terms, the 8 and the root 5, by both of these terms. The order in which you do it doesn't matter as long as you do multiply both of these terms by both of these terms. Now I can multiply the 8 by the 8 and the root 5 by the 8. And then I'm going to multiply the 8 by the minus root 5 and the root 5 by the minus root 5. So here we go, let's see how that goes. 8 multiplied by 8, 8 8 is 64. And then root 5 times 8, 8 times root 5, root 5 times 8, is 8 root 5's. So I've multiplied both of these terms by the 8, now let's multiply them both by the minus root 5. 8 times root 5. Root 5 times 8. If you multiply those two together, you'll get 8 root 5. Now let's get minus. 8 multiplied by minus root 5 is minus 8 root 5. And now I've got to do root 5 multiplied by the root of 5. And I hope you'd appreciate that it comes to 5. If you multiply the square root of a number by itself, you get the number. The square root of any number multiplied by the square root of the same number equals the number. Uh, but I've got a minus times a plus, which is a minus. So that could be root 5 times root 5, which is 5. Not much I can do about the bottom part just yet. So let's just leave that be. And you'll see that plus 8 root 5 and that minus 8 root 5 will just actually cancel out. So on the top you're left with 64 minus 5, which is 59. Now, that should make you think to yourself, there must have been a reason why the bottom part was root 59. The last piece of manipulation, because that's all it is, is called manipulating thirds is to appreciate that when you have a fraction and you multiply the top and the bottom by the same quantity you don't change the value of the fraction at all it's called equivalent fractions but what you can do is make the fraction look very very different so I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by root of 59 this just comes from practice, and I hope now you've seen it, you'll realise what happens. What will happen is on the bottom you'll get root 59 multiplied by root 59, which, like this argument up here, ends as 59. And on the top you've got 59 multiplied by the root of 59. So the overall effect of multiplying the top and bottom by this root of 59 is that now this 59 cancels, leaving you with an answer, which is, if you like, simpler 
than the answer we had over here. And that's what we're asked to do, write in this simplest form. So we've taken that answer and done this manipulation and ended up with something looking simpler. Well, that was question 18.